Hi, it's Pola from Pola Quilting. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. My friend just told me she's getting married in a few weeks and I got a panic attack because obviously as a quilter I want to make a quilt for her and I didn't have any nice blocks ready. Uh, all the quilts I've made already got a purpose and now I have to quickly design something and make to, to you know, to gift her. And what do you do if you need a quick uh, quilt? You design large. So in this tutorial I'm going to be going large and I'm going to be trying something new which is working with curves. So the block I will be working on it will be a wonky drunkard's path <laughs> uh, block. Uh, wonky because I do not have a template and also I don't think they're making template uh, 12 and a half inch uh, big. So I will be doing it, uh, you know, freehand and I will show you how I how to do it and hopefully we'll all have fun with it. So first of all, I always work with scraps, uh, you know, I like scrappy quilts. So I went through my stash and I've picked out quite a batch of uh, fabrics and I cut a 12 and a half inch squares out of them because that's, you know, I want to achieve as biggest um, block I can have. So from 12 and a half, I should hopefully will be able to um, square it up to 10 and a half. And then what I did, I paired them up together uh, to have a contrast. So this bright pink with this uh, darker pink, for example, um, something like this with something like that there's a still pink which is kind of uh, bringing it together but contrast that does not necessarily need to be in the colors the contrast can be in the pattern as well so kind of think about it uh, so i've got two red col colors here but totally different patterns so uh, that will give a nice effect on the blocks as well so i pair them up together so it's easy for me now to just crack on the second thing I had to work out is what are the best way of going with those curves because uh, to be fair it's my first journey with the curves but I did some testing and uh, this kind of the steeper the, the curve the harder it goes and you know it can go wrong so with this uh, 12 and a half inch block I kind of worked out that if I want to have easy sewing what I need to do. I do pair them up. You can go with four pieces or six, whatever you feel comfortable cutting through. I was working with two at a time. So uh, when I was doing my testing, the best results I was having uh, when I was kind of starting from about two inches from the right and I wanted to finish about two inches uh, at the top there. And I just prehand that curve quite nice and it's not very kind of curvy. It's quite nice uh, angle here. So let me do that now with that pair. So like I said, I'm not measuring here, it's more or less two inches. If you want to try, you know, measure it, measure it, that's fine. But you can do it just, you know, eyeball it more or less here. And then you can put your finger where you want to finish so you kind of have that guidance where you're going. But make sure you take your finger away before you get to with the cutter. Or if you're feeling like, oh, I can cut myself there, just make a mark with a pen or pencil um, where you want to finish. So let's start. you go so that's my first cut uh, piece and I will just swap them because obviously I want to create those um, angles here and you know sewing this with that that doesn't make sense so make sure you mix them up and now we'll get to the machine to sew those angles together so I've got my quarter inch foot on my machine and um, that's how you want to set yourself up I mean, to be fair, even you, if your quarter is not quartered at this point, uh, it really doesn't matter. We just want to put uh, those two pieces together. Um, there are, you know, if you watch other tutorials, two schools. You either add this one on top or you add this one on top. I would suggest maybe have some scraps and just, you know, see what works for you before you start batch uh, sewing it together. I found it easier to add... Um, uh, this kind of curved where I'm coming from on the on the triangle shape but you may find the other way around is easier for you 
how I'm aligning it to be fair it doesn't really matter because you were going to be squaring it up anyway but as a practice I always try to um, leave in those shapes uh, you know like triangles um, hexagons things like that I'm trying to eyeball where the quarter is going to be so that's that triangle sticking out by a quarter so when I open it up those two uh, edges will be aligned but again because we're going to be squaring it up and you will see how much of that uh, uh, how much that angle will eat the fabric it really doesn't matter so it's up to you how you want to start so once you start sewing really don't kind of worry what's happening here at the bottom of your fabric you want to focus just on what's coming in through your machine don't pull your fabric, don't pull the bottom fabric. You know, they are now caught on bias in most of the spaces. So if you pull it, it will wrinkle and will not look so great when you want to iron later. So the only thing you want to do is just guide it. But the, the guidance will be just literally where you're maybe, you know, half an inch from the needle down. That's the, the space you want to kind of keep an eye on. And go slow, make sure you go slow. And as you get to where that kind of foot is finishing and the angle is now changing, they slightly move the fabric to get you where you want to be. As you can see, uh, I kind of I didn't speed up this process, uh, so you you could see it in the life how how quickly or how slow I was stitching. Literally every every four four or five needles up and down, every four or five stitches, I was stopping to readjust the fabric, um, so it kind of matched up nicely. So let me chain piece the second part and we see how it looks. blocks are ready let's have a look how they look before ironing and after it okay so looks pretty good I don't have any wrinkles here so now you want to take it to the ironing uh, board and iron or press it but uh, what I suggest you always press with that kind of a sticking out bit out so the seams goes uh, th this way uh, when I was doing it other way around that because you know I wanted to keep always pressed to the dark always pressed to the dark when I was doing it uh, other way around this way the, the fabric was kind of wrinkling here more so if you go this way and you nicely press and I also use it you know on my last kind of in this point of time when I take it to the ironing I will also use a starch so it will nice and make that block nice and crisp so let me do that now and I will show you how it looks okay so nice uh, pressing a little bit of uh, spray starch and the blocks are you know nice and flat but you can this is what I wanted to show you how much of that curve kind of taken off the fabric you, you see they're not matching perfectly here but that's fine like I said we'll be squaring it up uh, but if for whatever reason I wanted to have a nice edge on one side I've managed to do it too but you know Squaring up, no problem at all, even if I have started here, as far as I kind of finish at the end of that angle, I'm good to go. So I will be squaring up to 10 and a half inch and I want to, um, when I'm squaring up, I would like to have as much here at the, at the edges of that opposite fabric as much as possible. So I will be squaring up from this side down. 
so so this part is as big as I uh, as I can get but you you can choose to go other way around depend uh, of the fabric you want to keep again this is wonky block so however it will look it will look I don't mind with big blocks like this if you have some nice fabric you want to show off that this pattern will actually be quite nice for that because you can see the fabric very well now there are some cutouts here which obviously are quite still nice and big and uh, I will keep them in a separate box because that will form our uh, part two of this project for the uh, other part of the blocks the quilt I want to make calls for a 6x8 layout and I didn't have enough of those kind of nicer fabrics to to make that many blocks so I thought you know once I'm going to square it up let's use up those to fill in the gaps so I will carry on with my normal blocks now first and from all of those scraps in part two of this uh, mini series about my quilt uh, for the wedding how I'm going to make the blocks to fill in the gaps that's one block squared up Now you could also choose to add another kind of curve here or maybe another curve here or another curve there and I will perhaps have another tutorial with some other options but um, then obviously you wouldn't square up at this point of time you would do all your curves first and then at the very end you would uh, square up the block because uh, obviously each curve will kind of eat into the fabrics. I started with 12 and a half inch block but if I have added maybe another two or three curves I may need it to um, square it up to maybe nine and a half or ten uh, depending from, from which side those curves would go into the block so just keep in mind that if you want to finish with big blocks you might need to even start with bigger pieces than I did. okay so that's the second block let me do a few more so we can pop it on the design uh, wall and uh, like I've mentioned I will be filling in the gaps with some uh, even more scrappy blocks from the leftovers but obviously you don't have to you may have enough fabric for for the project so I will make uh, you know a few more of those blocks and we'll pop them on the design uh, board and let's have a look what layouts we can work out from those and how they look when they are made that you know without templates without any uh, you know just freehand cutting how do they look together
So I've put on the design board some of the blocks I've made just to show you uh, different colors I've used and different patterns and how they went together, you know, in that contrast part of the uh, creation of the block. There's lots of different patterns you can make uh, out of those blocks. So uh, you can search them on Google or you can search them on Pinterest in other places. So I won't necessarily show uh, you all of those. Because those blocks are so big, uh, it really, really went quickly to make them. It wasn't very difficult. Uh, it was my first uh, block with a curve and I think I'm kind of sold on it. I probably will be making more tutorials with those because it was really fun to make and you can see with all of those scrappy fabrics uh, it really looks awesome so uh, there will be more of those it was really fun project to make I really like how they look I, I think you can use really uh, fabrics you would never think they will go together just look for one uh, one thing to match them up it's either a piece of the color on it or a piece of the a uh, pattern on it in different colors just something to link them together but as you can see uh, maybe the pairs maybe have been matched up somehow but the, the blocks themselves are very different and I'm not going to be kind of worrying about what goes where as far as it's not the same fabrics next to each other because they really really look very nice like that they all different how the curve is uh, kind of when when it started and when it finished but I think it's adding to the design I hope you enjoyed this tutorial on the wonky uh, drunkard's path uh, blocks. I hope it will inspire you to try your own. As you can see, you don't need necessarily a tool to make them. You can just uh, freehand them and start from the bigger blocks. Honestly, it was much easier than uh, small, small ones. So try on the bigger pieces first. And in the part three, I will be working on the back of that quilt. I want to make a scrappy back as well. I've got an idea already in my head how that back can look like. So uh, again, if you haven't subscribed, please do so, so you don't miss out on that uh, that tutorial as well. And the, that backing, uh, you know, it doesn't necessarily need to be a backing. You could easily use it as a front uh, of the quilt as well. Thank you very much for joining me today for this tutorial and see you next time.